Today we're going to be starting our investigation of taking measurements and really recording that data in an appropriate manner in a scientific classroom. And for some of you, this is going to be your absolute favorite information because you love math and you understand things like significant figures and dimensional analysis and conversions, and it's just going to come easily to you. And for some of you, this is going to be the start of a very difficult concept. If math is not your thing, if significant figures made no sense when you did them in ninth grade, if you really have a fear of trying to figure this out, then please make sure that you are absolutely doing every single assignment that I give you, as well as some of the additional practice that I provide. And please make sure that you are reaching out to me constantly so that we can get you a better understanding now. It's going to make it so much easier for you throughout the semester if you understand from the beginning how to handle the math within our chemistry curriculum. So as a quick preview, when we're taking measurements, we are going to use our scientific units, meaning that we're really using the metric system. We'll be using meter sticks that measure in centimeters or in tenths of centimeters, which would be millimeters. We're going to be using graduated cylinders or maybe even beakers. They're a little less precise, but that would be to measure our volumes of solutions. Now, if we're trying to take the volume of a solid, we might actually go back to our meter stick or our ruler and measure the sides in centimeters. And then when we multiply length times width times height, we would get a unit of cubic centimeters. Or we might even be using water displacement, which is a method I think you used in the middle school, where you fill a graduated cylinder to a certain amount of water and then drop an irregularly shaped solid in, which would make the level of the water rise corresponding to the amount of volume of the solid that you dropped in. Masses, we'll be using our balances. We do have quad beam balances that you'll practice with in one of the first labs, but after that we'll go straight to digital balances. And similarly, we'll usually be using digital thermometers, but we also have some old analog thermometers available for you to practice taking measurements. Once you choose the appropriate tool and record your measurement with the appropriate a number of significant figures, which we'll spend some time talking about later, as well as the appropriate unit, things like meters, centimeters, grams, kilograms, milliliters, centimeters cubed, degrees Celsius, remember the metric units, then we might also have you convert to a different unit, and that would be using the process of dimensional analysis, which we're going to take some time today just kind of previewing so that you're better prepared when you get to the next chapter in the textbook. Now, as we use dimensional analysis, it's incredibly, incredibly important that you remember scientific notation because sometimes the units that we're converting into are going to either be really, really big answers or really, really small answers. It's gonna help if you can rewrite a number in scientific notation like this. So for instance, let's say that our number was 0 0.00217 grams in the end. Scientific notation gets rid of all not significant zeros. And to do that, we move our decimal point over until we have one number in front of the decimal that's not a zero, and we rewrite it with the decimal in that place. So 2.17, that's all of the significant numbers, the ones that weren't the leading zeros. And then it's always times 10 to the something to just show how many places you moved your decimal. So we moved our decimal one, two, three spots to get it behind the seven. That's gonna be a negative three. Just remember, negative sign just means that your original number was a small number. So instead of writing an answer as 0 .00217, you'll often see it written as 2.17 times 10 to the negative 3. And that really just gets rid of any ambiguity of whether zeros are significant or not. You could also write this answer as 2.17 capital E negative 3. The E here just means times 10 to the, and that actually corresponds really well to your calculators because when we want to type times 10 to the, we really need to get out of the habit of typing it as times 10 caret. It works sometimes, but sometimes, especially when we're dividing by a big or a small number, it's going to mess up your entire calculation. So what I'd like you to try to get in the habit of doing is using this second comma 
On mine, it says capital E, capital E. On most of your calculators, it'll either show up as a capital E, two capital E's, or sometimes the button actually says times 10 to the, and then you just put your exponent in, negative three. One thing we're really gonna try to get you in the habit of is using that 10 to the button, or the E button, instead of typing in times 10 caret. Take a moment now, try to locate that button on your calculator, and if you can't find it, feel free to take a picture of your calculator and email it to me so that I can try to help you out. So again, scientific notation, that's something that we're going to be, just be kind of previewing today and looking.